If you watched our last Space Busters episode, then you'll remember us building these miniature planets that are so cute and cuddly. Well, there's one thing that I've gotten overwhelmingly in the comments of not just that Space Busters episode, but every one before it as well. The question is, can you move planets? Can you pressurize planets? And can you mine planets? Or at least what happens if you mine the whole planet? And what happens if you do it for asteroids? Well, in this episode of Space Busters, we're gonna put that to the test. What's up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome to Space Busters, a series where we put random things in space engineers to the test to see what will happen. We're on the miniature Earth right now and you can see the miniature, I don't know what that is, either Mars or the alien planet. Oh, uh, that must be the alien and that's the Mars. Uh, so yeah, like, I, like you saw in the intro, in this episode we're going to be trying to mine through an entire planet. We're going to be trying to pressurize the planet uh, with a, a couple different ways just to see if it's possible. And then we're going to try to move the planet, not necessarily in that order. In fact, I think, you know what, we're going to start with, uh, let's start with pressurizing. We're going to see if we can pressurize an entire planet. Let's go. Okay, the first test we're going to be doing is the pressurization test. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be testing whether voxels can be pressurized. So if you have a building on top of voxels, so on top of the planet, with no building underneath, can it be pressurized? And so we're doing this on Mars because Mars doesn't have oxygen. You can see on the bottom right there, Earth does have oxygen. So if we tried to do this on Earth, we wouldn't be able to find anything out because it'd already be pressurized. It wouldn't do anything. So uh, just for our starting kit right here, we've got ourselves a nice set of oxygen tanks, a nice set of oxygen generators, some batteries, uh, a couple of collectors, and a crap ton of ice. And that's 23,000 ice. It started off at 100,000 ice, but I think it sucked some up so it could turn it into oxygen. Then if we follow this down, we've got our nice conveyor belt, which is going to bring oxygen to this little room. Now this room here, and you'll, you'll see what I mean by the voxel test uh, in a second, but this room here is, uh, has, has walls on all sides. And if you'll see here, we'll, we'll, we'll take a quick loop around it. Uh, you'll see there are walls on all sides and that, the walls actually go into the ground. So if we go into uh, spectator cam and we go down, you'll see the walls continue down a little bit further, thus making them pressurized with the ground as far as the ground is concerned. So in a real life situation, probably this building would be pressurized because it is connected to the ground. So what we're gonna do with our beautiful building is we're gonna step inside and as soon as we close this door, if this is going to work, it's going to be when we close that door and that's gonna start pressurizing and that'll prove a lot of people in the comment section wrong. So let's see, because a lot of people think that this is not going to work. So let's test it out, close the door and let's see if it pressurizes. and it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's give it a couple more minutes, see if anything starts to happen. Well, the door is for sure closed and the building is for sure touching the ground everywhere because we saw underneath, we went all the way to the ground. So it looks like from this point, it looks like it is not possible to pressurize a room using voxels as one of the sides. You have to actually connect everything and you'll see that actually, let's let's prove that one right. Uh, so if we were to then connect this all on the bottom, so this is underground. If we were to then connect that all right there, oops, we have one piece right here that needs to be connected. If we were to connect all this and then go back, we should see that the room is now pressurizing. So you do need to have blocks on all sides. You cannot, voxels or planet or ground cannot be one of the sides. You have to have blocks underneath. Of course, you can cheat this if you want to by going into creative mode and just using spectator cam to make blocks on the ground or underground if you want to make it look like it's pressurized realistically. Moving on with our pressurization tests, I want to see if we can pressurize the whole planet. Let's see if we can do it. So as you might imagine, this is going to be a, take, take a long time to do, but we're just going to build pretty much a gigantic square around the entire planet. And we're going to see if we can pressurize Mar mini Mars. <laughs> we're not going to do big Mars. Big Mars would take a long, long time. So mini Mars, you have to settle for that. All right, guys, welcome back and behold, Mars in a box, I guess is what we're going to call this. Um, Mars is completely enclosed except for one hole right there. And I'll show you, uh, in fact, this is Mars. That's Earth right there. That's the alien planet. And that's Mars. Completely enclosed. Don't worry about that little panel. That was a, uh, just a panel I used to, uh, to help me build the thing. Yeah, it's completely enclosed and it should be, unless this is a hole. Nope, that's not a hole. It should be completely airtight as well. Now, air tightness calculations are fun for the game to do. That's why they ha there's a setting to turn it off. Um, 
Now, I can't imagine how the game's going to react when we try to tell it to calculate the whole planet's air tightness. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to stick a couple of uh, couple of things on. Let's see what happens. Um, there we go. If those turn green, that means we're good. And if they turn... Or, yeah. I mean, I guess right now it's not really doing much. Uh, we're probably going to have to go run around and try and find a hole. Because I bet you there's some, some hole somewhere. Where's... Uh, Number five. Here it is. Those are upside down. Doesn't really matter. Oh my god. They're actually working. They finally calculated that all of Mars is airtight. I'm so happy that I didn't miss a hole. Actually, you know what? While we're waiting for them to work, let's... Uh oh. Okay. I think we're fine. We're going to put these here because it looks cooler. And it's just the perfect spot for them. I've been working a lot on that Battle Royale map, so... Freaking... I've got design in my, in my, in my blood going right now. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. How long is this gonna take? Probably a really long time. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's just, let's put a timer on it. We can actually see right here, our room pressure is actually going up pretty fast. Well, pretty slowly, but like, it, it's act it is going up. So that's a good sign. We should be reaching our second bar any second now. Well, any few seconds now. The game keeps stuttering, probably because it really doesn't like this, this object we have. How big is this object, actually? 363,000 blocks. Block limit on my um, on the official Andrew Man Gaming server, by the way, is like 8,000 or 12,000 or something like this. This is 363,000. That's insane. Wait a second. Hang on. Oh my god. This has to be, get to 100%. I thought it had to get to 1. No, this has to get to 100%. Holy crap. This is going to take ages. Well, I guess we'll expand it more. Well, folks, you know what they say, go big or go home. This is our farm of <laughs> air vents. It doesn't actually look like all of them are working. I don't think we have enough oxygen for all of them to work at the same time. But how are we doing with, with all of these? Oh my god, did it not make it go faster at all? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get more oxygen uh, with, with a bunch of oxygen generators. Graphics strap. No! <laughs> Overheating. Or malfunctioning. Space engineers. Are <laughs> what did we do? All right, guys, we're back at it. Oh my god, it actually crashed the driver. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. Like the game actually completely crashes the driver. Like the the graphics driver. I've never had that happen. That's a first for me. So, yay for firsts. Um, this is going to take forever. I don't even know if it's going to actually succeed. It appears that putting more of these on here does not actually speed up the process. Maybe, just maybe, we need more oxygen tanks. Is that the case? Maybe it is. We shall find out. Let's just get a bunch of oxygen tanks. They start out half full because we're in creative mode. Okay, so we keep spawning 999,000 ice. So that we can refill these. Oh god, some of our ice fell. No ice, stop falling. Okay, I think it's fine. They're they're at least it's at least working. How are we doing? We're at eleven. We're at twelve percent. It's going up rapidly. Okay, we, I think we have enough ice. I think we're good on ice for a long time because you guys are are working hard uh, to get your fill, and you guys are going well as well. Awesome. Okay, all we gotta do now is sit back and relax as the air comes in. Channel entry three twenty five. It's been 15 minutes, and the pressurization seems to have stopped. Room pressure at 69.02%. We shall try to reload, see if it fixes it. Here we are, attempt number two of pressurizing all of Mars. Uh, another 15 minutes have gone by, and I've been just chilling out here watching this. Will it get past 69, though, is the question. No. Why not? Why will it not? I've tried adding more vents. So I've got I've got these vents, but then I've got these vents as well. The thing is, once you get past a certain number of vents, they just don't they don't do anything anymore. So I'm wondering why we cannot uh, get past 69. Is there just a, a limit? Is there a limit to how pressurized you can go with a room like this? If I squeezed in the walls, would it go down any or would it go up any? 
Oh my god, okay, so we're now at 69.03, and all I did was I, I blocked in some of this area here. So it looks like there's just a maximum amount of area that can be pressurized. So all this empty space here, it's just the, the game won't do it. The game will not pressurize past a certain amount. So what we could do, if we really want to get this thing pressurized, is we could just eliminate some of the space on the side. So some of the space we wouldn't need, we could just eliminate some of it. Just kind of shrink in the sides quite a bit and hopefully that would, uh, that would, but I, we'd have to shrink it in so much. I don't even know if it'd be possible. I cut off, how much did I cut off? I cut off like probably like 2% of the whole thing. So maybe it goes up 2% and then it stops. No, it's gone up quite a bit here. Can we get to 75? That'll push us to four bars. Is four bars high oxygen? No, it's still not high oxygen, but it shows the four bars, which is a good sign. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I will be able to uh, cut off enough of this to actually make a difference um, on this Mars planet. So, at least I think we know enough about this to, to be able to determine if it's actually at all possible. So, um, can you pressurize... I don't know, big things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. But there, it, it, it appears that there's a limit at which you cannot pressurize any farther. And, like, if your room gets too big, you can't pressurize any farther. So, can you pressurize the real Mars? No, definitely not. It, it's not even, it wouldn't even be possible in the game because the room you'd have to make would have to be way too big for it to even be able to, uh, to, to work. Can you pressurize miniature Mars? Yeah, I would say you probably can as long as you build yourself a, a tight enough room. It would take me probably hours to cut enough slack off of this to actually pressurize this thing. And since we're at four bars here, I'm just gonna say, you know what, it's pressurized more or less. It's pressurized to the point where we know if we can do it or not. So guys, I'm sorry I'm not gonna spend a bunch of hours trying to figure out, or trying to actually pressurize Mars for you guys, but I, I feel like we've gotten to the point where it's, uh, it's good enough and it's just better off moving on to the next thing. So let's get on to, can you move a planet? All right, guys, we're back on Earth to figure out if you can move a planet. So we're gonna start by building ourselves a nice little platform with a bunch of thrusters on it, uh, enough to say that we tried. <laughs> I don't know that this will be possible, but we're gonna try it on the miniature planet uh, because that is, it's better trying something on a miniature planet than it is trying on uh, the actual sized one. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen with the miniature planet. Um, before it happens with the large one. So uh, for this demonstration or for this test, what we're going to do is we're going to stick a seat on here. We're going to stick a couple of batteries on the thing as well. And then we're just going to stick a bunch of thrusters pretty much everywhere. And I think, you know, let's go with, no, I don't want to go with hydrogen. I don't really want to hook them all up. So we're just going to go with a bunch of gigantic um, thrusters here. We're going to turn them down. So we're pushing into the planet and we're just going to kind of place them around us here uh, to, to, um, to uh, try and move the planet. Place them pretty much everywhere. If the planet would move, that should be enough thrusters, right? Uh, let's add a couple more batteries because I don't think we have enough here. So let's do... Well, that's probably enough, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, can we move the planet? Test number one. We have our mini Earth right there and here we go. Can you move the planet? It does not appear that this is working very well. Huh. Okay, maybe a planet is too big. Let's try it on our roid. We have a roid right here, and we're gonna try to move our roid. Uh, so let's, I don't really want a gravity align, but that's fine, whatever. Uh, let's do that. Let's place this stuff here, place, place it down here as well. And we're gonna try and move it. This time we're gonna try using ion thrusters because we're out in space a little bit farther. Uh, we have no oxygen, so the other thrusters won't work. Actually, let's, let's, no, 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 tilt. There we go. Okay, throw a couple of these babies on here. In fact, let's just, let's just go ham. Let's just place them everywhere. Let's go ham with these things. I mean, if we're going to be able to move a roid, we're, it's going to take a lot of thrusters, right? Roids aren't, aren't, uh, don't, don't like to move very much, do they? So we're going to stick a couple of those things there. Let's get them, give them a couple of batteries as well. And, uh, where's our batteries? Number seven. All right, uh, that's probably enough. Let's give it a couple of gyroscopes as well because we might be able to tilt the roid. We'll see if that's possible. That's not a gyroscope. Uh, there we go. Bunch of gyroscopes. 
How many do we want? That should be enough. Okay. And let's give ourselves a nice little seat. All right, here we are on the Roid. V, zoom out. You can see we have way more thrusters than the Roid has Roidness. So let's go. Can you move a Roid? I'm moving my mouse around as well to see if the gyros are going to help me tilt. It does not appear that we can move a Roid. So can you move a planet? That's a negative. Can you move a roid? That's a negative. And the reason for that, if you want to know the actual game reason, is because these are made out of voxels. They're static objects. They're not physics objects that bounce around everywhere. Uh, a lot of people were surprised in the, the moon bridge video that the bridge did not collapse because the moon is rotating around the Earth. Well, in Space Engineers, nothing is rotating around anything. Now, you might say, well, what is well, the sun? The sun is rotating. Look. If I go to admin tools, I can move it. It's rotating, right? No, the sun is part of a skybox. The sun is a, um, it's not actually a physical object. You can't actually go to it. Nothing in this game rotates around anything else unless you send a, a grid rotating around the planet trying to orbit it like we did earlier. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's that one busted. All right, the final thing you guys wanted to see is what happens when you mine an entire planet so we're gonna try it. We're gonna try mining the alien planet because uh, we did everything. We did something on the other two planets. Look, look how small the planets are. You can see the stuff we built on that. That's insane. Okay, we're gonna try to mine the whole alien planet by building ourselves a gigantic miner. It's probably going to crash the game. Be prepared. Let's build the miner. Alrighty, guys. Welcome to the planet miner. I'm gonna save real quick. Save as that. Um, this is our planet miner. It was built on a whim. It's got lots and lots of drills, and uh, we can turn them on. So let's try this. We're going to try and destroy the alien planet. We're going to try going in a couple of different. Just we're just going to try to sweep by, pretty much. So let's uh, let's first get in the area. The ship should have quite a bit of stopping power here, uh, so we shouldn't need to um, be careful. But we're going to start with... We're probably going to do it in quadrants. That might be the safest way. So we're just going to do kind of a quadrant right here. And then we'll do the, the other quadrant, then the other quadrant, and then the other one. And we'll do, that'll be that. All right. It's turned on. And here we go. <laughs> Get a little closer. This is going to be interesting. All right. Uh, prepare for sim speed drop. And this might take forever. So it turns out this thing doesn't mine very fast. Uh, I think we're stuck. All right, guys, this didn't work. It uh, we <laughs> we mined a fraction of the planet, even though it's a small planet. This what the? Let me try voxel hands. Haha! -ha. Okay, so we could try to mine with voxel hands, if it's all the same to you guys. It's very, very much quicker, so let's try and do that, and let's see what happens once the entire planet's gone. We'll pretend that our magical miner over there actually did this. <laughs> that thing can't even hold itself up on its own weight. What the heck's happening over there? Look at our poor miner! <laughs> As we're destroying the planet, the miner's being sucked into the center of the planet. That's actually kind of funny. I, I actually do wonder kind of what what the miner is experiencing right now as far as gravity goes. Because I know once you go into a planet, the gravity actually gets less and less as you get towards the center. So I do wonder how the planet, or how the uh, miner is feeling. All right, this is interesting. We've just destroyed a lot more rock and the ship's actually staying where it is. So I wonder if it's found the center of gravity of the quote-unquote planet. You hear a lot of really creepy sounds coming from the uh, from the ship over there. <laughs> Do you guys ever wonder what a flat earth society and space engineers would look like? This. This is what it would look like. <laughs> that right there is your flat earth society of space engineers. Alright, unfortunately I wasn't able to destroy some of these small bits. They just won't go away for some reason, but the planet is now effectively destroyed, and if we actually zoom out, you will see... Well, it looks like a an iris. It looks like an eyeball or something. That's super creepy. 
Imagine if you came to a planet and this is what you saw. All it is is the atmosphere. The planet itself is just completely gone. And this thing, the gravity still exists, by the way. Big time. <laughs> you will get sucked into the center, and then the gravity is no more once you're kind of towards the center. Um, but yeah, really cool. I've got to say. Oh my god, from Mars, it just looks creepy. Look at this. This is just, it's, it's like the planet should be there, but instead it's just this giant ship. And you think the giant ship is hovering outside the planet, but no, the giant ship is inside where the planet used to be. All right, guys. Well, with that, I think we can answer all of our questions that we had today. So can you pressurize a, uh, a voxel? No, you cannot pressurize if voxel is one of the sides. All sides have to be made of blocks. Uh, can you pressurize a planet? Not a real sized one, but technically you could probably pressurize an asteroid. Uh, we were able to pressurize most of Mars where um, the only limitation was the actual size of the building that we put Mars in. That was pretty insane. Mars was inside a building. Just think about that for a second. A planet was inside a building. But anyways, can you move a planet or an asteroid that is a negative on both sides of that? You cannot move the voxels. They just, it, it just does, the engine doesn't work that way. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, can you mine through an entire planet? Yes, you can. And you're actually looking at the result of that. The, uh, it looks like the planet technically remains, but there's nothing inside it. Just all the voxels are gone. You could probably troll someone really hard with this. Just mine their entire planet. They come back and they're like, Hey man, coming to play some space engineers. Wait a second. Alright guys, well if you liked that video, please hit the like button. Put your comments and your suggestions for future Space Busters episodes in the comments section below. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Space Busters.